Welcome back. In section 2.1, we are going to be solving linear equations in one variable. So as a matter of definition, an equation is simply a statement that two algebraic equations are equal. So it may sound obvious, but equations will always have equal signs. Whereas an expression, an algebraic expression, there's no equal sign. So if you look below here, I have a variety of equations. 3x minus 7 equals 2. 8 over x equals negative 22. x minus 5 equals 4. These are all equations. While an expression, those are simply, um, you know, something like 7x minus 5. Okay? Uh, 3x plus 4y minus 5z. Those are just algebraic expressions. There's no equal signs here. Okay? Well, we are going to work with linear equations. It's a special kind of equation, a linear equation in one variable. Okay? The exponent on the variable is 1. Okay, so our variable here in 3x minus 7 equals 2, the variable is x, the exponent on that variable is 1. We are, we are not showing the 1, but it's there, 3x minus 7. Okay, here the exponent 8 over x, the exponent on x is 1, x to the first power. Okay, some things that are not linear, some examples of nonlinear equations, x squared minus 5 equals 3, and the square root of y equals 12. Here, well, the square root of y, that's not y to the first power, um, and certainly x squared, that's x to the second power. You guys might know that as a parabola, okay? Linear equations, all of those are going to be, um, the graphs of those will be lines, thus linear. A solution to an equation, a solution is simply any real number that makes the equation true or that satisfies the equation, okay? So we could have a variety of solutions to an equation, okay? Some of our solutions we might have, um, you know, it's going to be a pretty entertaining video. X equals 2 is a solution, okay? Um, but it's not always one number. Um, we could have any real number might satisfy an equation, depending on what the equation is. And 0, of course, is a very valid solution as well, okay? Negative numbers, fractions. Um, so we could have one number, we could have several, uh, we could have all real numbers. The process for solving linear equations in one variable uh, goes as follows, and we'll do some sample problems in a few minutes. But first thing you want, want to do is try and clear all the fractions. If there are fractions, um, if it's an equation, we can multiply each side of the equation by the lowest common denominator, okay, or any common denominator for that matter. We can find a common denominator we multiply each term by that common denominator um, that eliminate the fractions. And we'll do a sample problem of that. Then simplify each side of the equation separately. Okay? So you might have to distribute to clear parentheses and combine like terms. Simplify each side separately. Distribute, uh, clear parentheses, combine like terms. Uh, that kind of thing. Eventually, you'll want to isolate variable terms on one side. So get all your x's to one side of the equation, all your y's, all your p's, whatever it is, whatever the variable is in that particular problem, get all those on one side of the equal sign. Okay? So you might have to add and subtract to both sides of the equation to get all the variables on one side. 
And remember, you can. You, the equation is like a scale, so you want to, what you do to one side of the equation, you've got to do to the other. Okay? So if you're going to subtract a number from one side, you have to subtract it from the other side. You're going to add a number to one side, you have to add a number to the other side. Okay? And then finally, we're going to isolate our variable. You might have to multiply both sides to get an equation with a coefficient of 1 on the variable. Okay? So we don't want 5x equals 15. We want 1x equals 3. Okay? That kind of thing. And then finally, you check your solution in the original equation. Just make sure your, your answer makes sense. Now we go to page 3. Here are the sample problems uh, that I promised you. So let's take a look at these samples. Okay, We're going to solve each equation for x. Uh, we have 7x minus 5x plus 15 equals x plus 8. Uh, I can combine the 7x and the 5x. Those are like terms. So we get 2x plus 15 equals x plus 8. Both sides are simplified. Now I want to gather all my x's on one side. So I'm going to move this 1x, and I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So now I get x plus 15 equals 8. Okay, I'm close to having x all by itself. Simply subtract 15 from both sides. I've run out of space here, so I'll just write it right next to it. x equals... Uh, whatever 8 minus 15 is, Ooh, x is a negative number, isn't it? Um, x is negative 7. And that's the solution to our equation. Sample number 2, negative 2x plus 5x minus 9 equals 3 times the quantity x minus 4 minus 5. On the left-hand side, um, I can combine my like terms. It looks like I'm going to get 3x minus 9 equals, and here I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 3 in, and I'm going to get 3x minus 12 minus 5. Interesting. Okay, um, let's combine our 3x's. I'm going to subtract 3x from this side and subtract 3x from this side. Hmm, 3x minus 3x, that's 0x. And I get negative 9 equals, um, and then negative 12 minus 5 here. This negative 12 minus 5, isn't that a negative 17? So I get negative 9 equals negative 17. That doesn't seem to make sense to me. Okay, negative 9 minus 17, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't equal. So, what are the valid values for x? Well, um, there aren't any valid values. I'm going to add 9 to both sides, and I'm going to get 0 equals um, negative 8. 0 doesn't equal negative 8 either. So, this particular problem, there is no solutions. There's no values for x that satisfy that equation. Moving on to sample problem three. Okay, now we have fractions. 3x minus 1 over 4 plus x plus 3 over 6 equals 3. Well, Back in our previous instructions here, we were told to clear fractions. We want to multiply each side of the equation by the common denominator. So let's take a look here. What's our common denominator between 4 and 6? Um, hopefully you see that our common denominator is 12. So we have to multiply both sides of the equation by 12. So when I multiply this by 12, well, we end up with 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4. Uh, if you prefer, I have 12 times 3x minus 1 over 4. 
So 12 over 4, well, that is 3. So we end up with simply 3 times 3x minus 1 plus here 12 over 6 is 2. So plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 36. Okay. I'm going to run out of room here, so I'm going to myself a little more space to work with. So let's finish off this problem. So we have 3 times 3x. We have 9x minus 3. I'm distributing the 3. And 2 times it. And I'm distributing the 2. We get 2x plus 6 equals 36. Okay. I'm going to combine my x's. 9x plus 2x is 7x. The negative 3 plus the 6, we get 7x minus 3 equals 36. No, we don't. 9x and 2x, is that 11x? 11x plus 3 equals 36. See, I'm giving you examples of mistakes not to make. 9 plus 2 is 11. 6 minus 3 is a positive 3. So we get 11x. Make that a little bit better looking. 11x for you. Okay. 11x plus 3 equals 36. I subtract 3 from both sides. We get 11x equals 33. We divide by 11 on both sides and get x equals 3. Okay, so there's sample problem number 3. A couple glitches in that one, but a good example of what not to do in, a, in that particular problem along with what to do. Sample problem number 4. This one has decimals, okay, and we can clear the decimals. The decimals are just like fractions by simply multiplying both sides of the equation or everything by 100. So if we multiply everything by 100, that is legal. We're just making everything 100 times bigger. Okay. Be careful not to multiply what's in parentheses by 100. Once we multiply the 12 hundredths by 100, that will take care of the parentheses. Okay. So watch out for that. So 100 times 0.05x, we get 5x plus 12 times x plus 5,000. Because once we multiplied the 12 hundredths by 100, we took care of this. Because we're multiplying that. Equals 94,000. So we get that's 94,000. So... 5x plus, distribute the 12, 12x, 12 times 5,000 is 60,000, equals 94,000. Subtract 60,000 from both sides. 5x and 12x, that's 17x equals 94 minus 60, gives us a very clean 34,000 divided by 17, and x equals 2,000. So some nice sample problems for solving linear equations. That takes care of this video for today, and we'll see you in class.